is uh, by way of introduction I'm gonna record this segment and a couple other ones don't know if I'll ever publish it but it depends if it works or not but one of the areas I really got to get finished to really enable me to get the layout fully running again as an enabling like continuous running and have operating sessions is to get this area here this is the access into the layout which currently I've been using a just a, a pull-out section that set in there that was for me and Steve and, and, and a few others that might have popped over basically a duck under well that's not going to work for a lengthy operating session where operators are going to be going in and out because they're going to go out to that room which is the crew rest area crew lounge again for soda you know pretzels soft drink donuts uh, watching videos while you're waiting for the next call etc etc so a lift out section with duck under is just not going to cut it now what i want to do here is have a swing gate and ideally i want it to be the full width the the actual opening if i call the width of the opening that you would walk through or could possibly walk through is about 30 inches 29 and a half 30 inches the actual width of the bench works about 19 and a half inches so that's a pretty sizable full you know gate to make swing it's going to be hinged back here it'll swing out this way around and then fold back i'll have to move the computer but if needed it would fold back this way and then you'd have access to walk in and out and you know bring larger items in and whatnot um, so hinged over here to swing out that way now i think i have an idea i think i have a concept for this it's going to be full width 19 and a half by about 29 and a half in order to do it i'm going to have to i think cut an arc in it here that will steal some of the aisle so it's going to get a little bit less um, but i think that's the only way that i can do it if i want to have the full 19 and a half inch width the entire length i think so i might pop even uh, pop into um the third planet software maybe show a segment of the design of this thing at least conceptually before i build it and i'm going to have bill shop help me because i don't claim to be a great carpenter but we've laid things out he's more than willing to help uh, the hard part for me would be cutting an arc in plywood and etc etc at least doing it neatly <laughs> i can cut it but man it may not look that good um so <laughs> So I'm going to try that, but I want to record this initial introduction segment uh, just for posterity. Like I, said, I don't know if I'm ever even going to do this, if this is going to work. But if it does, it might be interesting for others to see what I did. Because a lot of the gates and, and swing gates that I've seen have been substantially narrower than that. Um, obviously, there's the kind that could come in and hinge up, just as a little lift up. Um, you know, a narrow one that's, you know, say the width of the track four and a half five six inches here for a double track main line or a much thinner gate maybe up to 10 inches or so that would swing out those from what i've seen look a lot simpler to make just in terms of what you have to do over here i think a, a thinner one could have a, a straight angled piece of wood but you can't do an angled piece of wood with this wide it, it, you just can't at least i'm not smart enough to figure out how with an arc i can understand it and if I show you in the software, that might make sense. So maybe I'll record a segment of that just to show it, at least the thought process that we're going through. So, all right, so this, uh, there's the introduction segment as we try to work on the concept and making this swing gate to allow the layout to be fully back together and get some operating sessions going. All right, so here we are in the third planet software. And I just want to show a brief segment to kind of show some of the work I did to determine if this swing gate's going to work. So here's the whole layout, and the area we're working on is over here. So I will zoom in to this area. This is where you come from the, what's now a family room, which will be the crew rest area, in through the workshop, and then into the layout. Now, right now, <clears throat> this is a lift out, a manual lift out. That's not going to work for operating sessions. So what I did was think about this quite a bit. I worked quite a bit with Bill Shaw for some ideas. 
and I think we have a workable plan to do what I want to do and what I would prefer to do is have a full width gate that swings open could make it narrower uh, you know and, and cut off say in here here's the track obviously uh, just for the tracks I could do a lift up a, a much narrower swing gate all that's certainly possible but I'd like to try this and, and see if I can pull it off somehow so I drafted up a concept basically with a 1x4 frame and I'm still working on the final design the, the difficult challenge that I ran into was was here where it made itself with not so much on the hinge side that's just going to hinge and swing away that's not a big deal but over here I originally had a design with a diagonal 1x4 coming down this way with a corresponding diagonal 1x4 as part of the layout well that's not going to work because this corner is going to swing in this arc so you cannot come past basically that as you see that highlighted in green I don't know how well it shows up on a YouTube video but this called a wedge piece is going to be a piece of three-quarter plywood and there'll be a corresponding three-quarter piece of plywood here which actually will all start as one piece and then we'll cut this arc out I still have to determine how we're going to lay that out. But basically that gap then will be the saw blade. Uh, whether we do it on a band saw, whether we do it on a, with, a, with a good quality jigsaw, which I don't really have. But this is my concept. And then scenery can be, you know, continuous across the whole width. I'm planning to bring it basically from the level here of Fairview, the far end of Fairview, across right in here. I like to put an underpass. I like, I like to model uh, of the Route 98 underpass that's in Fairview, Pennsylvania. So it'll be plywood, then come down to an, a road underpass under the railroad tracks, and then back up on this level. There's a, there's a corresponding road on this side that will continue across, slight downhill, come to a left hand turn here to go underneath the railroad. Now I, th I think this is going to work. <laughs> I hope so. And let me show you what I did. Now one of the original issues I had, I'd, I'm going to go into here and I can rotate freehand. Now if you notice this rotation tool pops up here in the center of the object which is the gate as I've drawn it. And for a long time I struggled with this because if I rotate this it's going to spin it around this point which is not what I want I want to spin it around this point where the hinge is going to be well I was playing around and through dumb luck I clicked on that and went holy crap look at this I can actually move the rotation point which makes sense the rub so I can set it right about there well you know where the hinge is going to be and then the fun part I can select this end and I can rotate the entire assembly at that point so it swings around and you can see this lower corner you might have to do a little bit of sanding at assembly this is not going to be probably no we're not going to make this perfectly and there definitely will be some cut to fit at assembly but it swings in this arc which is this larger circle here which is about a 29 and a half inch radius arc and I can continue, I can swing that thing all the way out, make sure it clears all the way through. This here is some molding that's actually on this wall, about an, an 8 and 1 8 inch out, so I make sure I clear that as well. And in the extreme, what I'd like to be able to do, when people are coming in and out during op sessions, is rotate it around, you know, roughly like that. Now, th this piece will still remain there with that arc cut into it. So the width that you'll have to physically walk through is only 22 and an eighth, called 22 inches. That should work. I have some other areas on the layout where the aisles are really cheated. They're down to 20 inches, and I, and I get through them fine. So I figured for in and out 
for an operating session when an individual is, you know, he's dropped his power over Eugene, he's going to come over and wait. He just can come through, swing it open, go over, come over here again, and then if I can select the darn thing. Not, oh, I know why I'm still selected. And you have a little finer control if you pull that out. So he pushes out, and then he swings it back. And I'll have to come up with some type of latch or something like that so I know that, you know, the tracks are properly aligned and boom, then it's back. So I, I think this will work if I can figure out how to mount, you know, this will all be one piece of plywood, probably over to about here, just because it'll be pretty much flat to where the, over to where the underpass will be. And then I'm going to put probably a one inch piece of blue foam or pink foam down That'll be the scenic base, and that's not really critical. The critical part is getting the gate made, getting it mounted so the darn thing swings okay. So this part has got to be permanently mounted. This will be a piece roughly, it's roughly a 19 and a half wide by 20-ish, I'm going to call it, something in that range, you know, three-quarter inch piece of plywood. We'll set it up. We'll cut that arc in it, have two pieces, use the smaller piece, somehow figure out how I'm going to mount it at, on this end of the layout. The other part will mount on the frame of the gate itself, and then figure out, of course, now there's a lot more work to do. <laughs> I have to determine, I think I have to beef up this area here with a nice little box because it's going to support the weight of the gate obviously when it swings and when it's when it's open I do need to determine how and I'll just show this because this is really really raw work here I'm doing some more work to figure out the physical size how to make the gate this is looking from the this here is the workshop side so looking into the layout the frame and I'm determining how to this end is gonna, this end has where the hinges are obviously I'm going to have two hinges I bought some heavy duty gate hinges at Lowe's I th think they're going to work okay but I've got the frame down below it I've got a 1 by 1 by 10 which gives me a 3 quarter inch piece which lines up which I can fit under here secure it in Bill has an idea for some corner pieces cut out of a 2x6 to, to make this a nice sturdy box. Have quarter inch plywood for the fascia, so to speak, on the outside to make, form the box. And, and that'll be, that's this grid shaped piece here that if I click on it, it obscures the other stuff. But that'll be roughly cut out here probably bring it over just something simple just to dress the gate up and bring it up to here it'll come across it'll be cut out then with a saber saw to come down to the road and there's my one inch pig foam on top of the grid and then come back up so that, that's kind of what I'm thinking maybe putting a three quarter inch piece of plywood across this side and the hinges are going to be right here so I want to beef up this end of it so when it swings it's got some good support uh, so this is not finalized yet. I'm still kind of playing with that. But that's the concept to get a full width gate, roughly 19 and a half by about, you know, 29 and a half and with the wedge down to 22, roughly 22 inches. Uh, fully scenic road coming off this side of the layout down to an underpass. Scenery continuing across from the Fairview side down the slope to the road. Um, that's what I prefer to do. So we're going to try it. I'm trying to find a day to get down to Bill Shop's house because he's got a beautiful workshop, wood shop, way nicer than anything I have. So that is the concept. So that's what I just wanted to show that. And uh, I said briefly, it's not nothing I do is brief, but that's how I'm kind of noodling around with this. And I, I think, oh, there's another way, another trick that I learned to, to actually rotate this. Since this is the circle it's going to rotate in, if I take this gate, and since I, I set this circle, the center of it's right here at the hinge point, 
because that's where I want, you know, it's got to line up that way to where I'm going to cut it. If I do this and group everything, so now the circle is part of the group. Now, if I go to rotate it, it automatically goes there because that, that point is the center of the group. So that makes it, <laughs> it's kind of a way to, it's not really cheating, but it's just another way, another workaround. And you'll see it'll rotate the same way. Of course, this circle is actually rotating, but you can't tell because it's just basically swinging around on itself. But that does the same thing as clicking that and then moving the rotation point. And this may be a little bit more accurate because it really is right there at the center. If I move it off the center, it depends if I put it perfectly, eh, which I, I get it close. And again, the biggest thing I wanted to verify is the clearance here with this bottom corner the clearance up to the molding that's up on the door coming into the workshop and just see if it you know kind of looks like it's going to do indeed what I want it to do and I think it will I think if I can actually pull this off I will be able to get a nice full width rotating gate that'll be good and sturdy and I'll be able to take a lot of the open and closing that will happen because, again, this area here is the crew rest area. I have a TV over here, a refrigerator. Um, I, can, I have a treadmill over here if people want to get down there and do some exercise. <laughs> yeah, we're model railroaders. That's not high on our list. Um, you know, have some snacks and whatnot. And then when they get called, they can come back through, bang, open up, go back to the train and get, get back to work. So, all right, that's the concept. Just wanted to show kind of the thought process behind this and hopefully be able to make this a reality someday. All right, we're back. Just a quick update uh, here in the Third Planet software. This is kind of the, uh, I'm hoping the final design, I hope it's going to work. So what I have here, just, uh, you know, again, it's the frame, one by four lumber kind of an odd shape here uh, just because of the arc I got to cut so this is looking down on it over here is the workshop side this will be the layout side so we're going to build a frame there's going to be a piece of plywood three-quarter plywood that's going to be cut into an arc I'll show that whole piece in a moment look at the side of it this side here will be an elevation looking this way just shows the frame the upper sheet of plywood, plywood, that's the pink foam. This is the roadway here. Um, then what I decided to do was basically this olive green piece shown in the plan here and the elevation here is a 1 by 10 that will fit right underneath here. Basically, I know it's hard to see, but that's that piece there. And again, this is not... Uh, a sophisticated CAD per package, so uh, nor am I, uh, am I anywhere near a sophisticated draftsman. But just to kind of show things, and it doesn't do well with phantom lines and hidden lines and that kind of stuff. But anyway, so that piece is there. It's going to be a support piece for this hinge side. I'm going to put another piece here. That's basically going to be a one by six. That's going to run down here, straight down behind the 1 by 10 to support that. This brown piece is going to be a 3 quarter piece of plywood. That's going to be 3 quarters, 17, 13, 16 by 20 and an eighth. Kind of wedged in there as well and that will be secured in. And then I'm going to have these corner pieces in here. You can see I have, this is the looking, this view here is looking this way at the back side on the hinge end of the gate so <clears throat> this is the upper frame this is the one by ten this is the quarter inch plywood fascia so to speak front on the on both sides this brown rectangle here if I can get it it's hard to get things sometimes anyway that is the three-quarter plywood these are the corner braces inside the top frame I might add two more braces here with corner pieces down to, again just to support it because it's going to be hinged over here 
probably two hinges, a hinge roughly here and say here. So all the weight, you know, it's going to want to weigh, uh, I'm not a mechanical engineer, but you know, the, the force moment, the force arm, force equals mass and acceleration or, or whatever, it's going to want to, you know, it's going to be, the weight will be out here with the supports being back here. So I wanted to beef this up a little bit. This is going to be a one by two that I might just run here just for more of this. Can I get that piece there? Okay, that's the quarter inch plywood fascia, so to speak. I didn't draw it the whole way because it's hard to draw angles without making a mess of things. But this will fit probably up along here, up to the top of the subroad bed across here. I'll make it one piece, then get the saber saw, and I'll cut it out, you know, for the hill. The abutments are set down to the road, cut it out on that side. So this is just going to be put in here somehow just to support it to make it look a little prettier going out on this side and similar on the inside I'll do the same thing as well I mean that's going to be back here a little bit because it's narrower but we'll come up with something for that so I think this is what I'm going to do uh, here's the piece oh the three quarter plywood piece uh, it's going to be 15 by about well by 19 and 5 sixteenths and then this I printed this out full scale on uh, six pieces of paper so now I'll take it and I'm going down to Bill's tomorrow to work on this lay it in there and mark this and hopefully cut that arc then I have two pieces one piece this larger piece imagine it flipped over you know that's this piece right here this smaller piece is on the layout side I'm still going to have to figure out how I'm going to mount it, to be honest. I don't really know because there's only so much I can do because the layout's already in existence. I don't want to rip and tear too much of the existing layout. But I think, <laughs> fingers crossed, this should work. Get me some good support back here. And I'm going to have to, you know, fudge it around a little bit when I get it actually built. Like I said, I'm going down tomorrow. Bill's able to help me. I have a couple days before i got to travel again, so I'm trying to get this done. Get it built, bring it up, try to, you know, kind of hold it in here. And again, this is the wet, the kind of this little wedge, tiny little piece I got to mount on the layout somehow. It's not perfect. That's why I had that little corner notch on it and might need to cut out of it. Get the gate in, try it, and maybe have Bill come up and help me. He, he offered to help me to mount it. I don't think I could hold all this in place, steady it. And then try to be drilling holes for the hinges. So he might come up and try to help me. And then hope, um, <laughs> hope against hope, that the darn thing swings okay. And then, you know, worry more about the, uh, I did show, pardon me as I pan back here. Again, this being the arc piece cut out. This just being, actually this piece here, I moved it just for clarity. But that'll be here on this side to support that's the subroad bay, three-quarter plywood piece to support it. Here's the bridge, the underpass, and then here's the other piece of plywood. So that will be the piece, and then this will all be scenic. This is going to slope down to the existing road that's coming off the layout right here. Come up to here. There's going to be a T intersection because the road does continue this way and then continue under the underpass. Whew. At least I hope so. So. That's that. That's kind of the design I settled on. We'll find out very shortly. Well, for you guys, probably just the next segment of the video. <laughs> uh, for me, it could be a couple days, but hopefully tomorrow I get everything cut back up. And then I do have the weekend. We have our NMRA division meeting, which is real close to Bill. So my plan is to bring it back home, try it, see what might need to be adjusted, take it back down to the meeting because Bill lives real close. If we need to, shoot over to his house, make any changes. Hacking, sanding, gnawing, cutting, notching, whatever I may have to do. Bring it back up, and then hopefully over the weekend, uh, get the darn thing mounted in, in, in place so I can actually get the layout back in full operation. So, Okay, more to come as we uh, progress here. All right, a little bit of an update here. To get down to Bill's and his wonderful wood shop, and we actually made this gate. And then he was gracious enough to come up the following day and help me hang it, because it was really something I couldn't do myself. 
and there it is now I'm not saying this is perfect and it's not done yet I still need to add the the sub road bed for the track which you can probably see from here but I just want to kind of give a in progress here where we are so we have it up we have it mounted it swings it clears we had to do a little bit of sanding which I'll show <laughs> which I'll show you uh, we mounted it up I had to add a piece of fascia here because I designed it to be flush from the gate to the fascia here and then I'll continue that on over here eventually three heavy-duty gate hinges which I purchased at Lowe's are what I used for that in fact I apologize the light is not the greatest here on this side because it wasn't really designed for a studio but that is the hinge I used um, they come to to a package I think let twelve dollars something like that heavy duty they do include the hardware you can see they're number 12 uh, hardware but we on oh well on Bill's suggestion I actually mounted these with um, quarter inch lag screws they do fit in the holes um, it's a lot sturdier I think I mean maybe the hardware would have been fine but uh, I, I did go with a uh, quarter inch by two inch but there were a couple some of these hit other screws that we did in because we didn't uh, or I didn't do a complete engineering analysis or anything so I had to take that one back out and go back I think with an inch and a half or something like that I mean that's gonna happen because I did not plan every location for every screw and, and whatnot but but got it mounted so this is the top view and I apologize it's a little tight in here so that's looking down now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the other side and show you how we decided to latch it which is a little different um, the gate is supported well let me let me just pause go on the inside and start from there because hey the lights a little bit better and I probably can explain things a little bit nicer from the inside so uh, let me pause and I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are on the inside, the layout side. And you can see how it's in. Now, obviously I still have a little bit of more work to do. I need to come up with something here to match it up. Um, I need to mount the... Where do I have it? Pardon me as I reach behind me. This is going to be the arc piece that's going to mount on the layout side to match the piece that's going to be in here cut out to the same arc so hopefully that'll swing so far everything swings pretty good but uh, so that's got to be done and you can say I need to figure out something just to support it a little bit I'm not too worried about supporting it I can put something along here but I need to put something out here for some support and probably for a piece of fascia to come out and match this you can see this is a little bit of a sand job this we had to do and I, I knew I was gonna have to do some of this to clear the end of this but that's okay so the gate is in like I say I did drill a hole here for wires to come through for the feeders not exactly sure how I'm gonna do all that yet but I'll get there and then when we were looking at this there's no support out here which I was really worried about how am I going to do that but it's a challenge because of the the arc and swinging you can't come past the arc to get a piece to come out to support it I really can't well I could without modifying it because we decided to add a piece here now it if I had a support under here and everything swings above it that'd be fine but because of this it won't clear it now I could notch this out cut it and notch it but <clears throat> when Bill and I looked at this this thing is fairly secure it's not really sagging at least yet at all um, I do have a support in the back and all the real weight is back here basically what's out here is just the frame and of course this and then it'll have a little bit more when I get the plywood on it but we were looking at it and how we decided to do this for now at least this is a toggle clamp that I used back in staging I bought them I think off of Amazon and you know we noodled around for a while how am I gonna latch this thing 
it has to be latched because it, it obviously you want it nice and straight when the tracks in place we thought about doing something out here but Bill was concerned and he's smarter than me about having everything have to line up just perfectly you know, and over time you know would it start to drift a little bit you know would you start missing alignment out here so I thought well wait a minute I do have these and what this does is it kind of let me so that opens you can see the gate does move a little bit but when that's in place it really locks it in nice and this is adjustable so I can adjust the tension you know over time if things start to expand or contract or whatever I can adjust this toggle clamp and then that pulls it in nice and then I'll actually rotate it for you everything does clear this is a highly engineered it do, everything does clear kind of the way I thought it would not by much but it does clear now again if over time if things do expand what a sixteenth of an inch or man eh, maybe getting closer to an eighth or so three sixteenths I don't know but I can always come back in and you know sand a little bit if, if I need to it does clear the molding in the back it does swing out so there's the back side where again where most of the weight is being the frame the three-quarter piece of plywood I added a piece down here just got my nervous Nelly probably wouldn't have needed it it is pretty darn sturdy uh, inside the frame this is a I think a one by eight that we ripped to fit in here and you know this dimension set for what I want for the sub road bed because I'm gonna have a bridge in there so we had to rip it which I couldn't do that's why I'm glad I was at Bill's that was ripped you can see I secured with some trim head screws I know they're too long um, but I didn't buy shorter ones and I had what I had so we, we went with that down below this is that other 1 by 10 that this is supported to on the uh, on the outside so it will swing all the way over oh, and hit my LED lamp I added this support here underneath there so that supports the back end when it's closed I did beef up this section of the bench work just to be sure because that's where all the weight is so I figured well I have some old you know two by threes around and this is not designed all that well I really, I really didn't you know think about this when I was putting this bench work in it's not lined up perfectly some of these are skewed a little bit but everything seems to swing okay at least for now so that's that and like I said everything does seem to I swing this Apologize using one hand here you can kind of see I'll try to get in there and see kind of hard to see but it does clear it clears the molding and then it clears right here it's I mean it's close and I kind of knew it was going to be so then you bring it all in now if you let it sit there see it will be out of alignment but once I take my toggle and then bring it in and then it, boom nice and pretty darn sturdy so at least for now I think that's how we're gonna do it now if the one issue is of course with this being on this side it's easy for a person to come out open and swing it now you can reach over and grab this to come in but I figure for an operating session there's always gonna be people around so if you're if you're outside and you don't want don't want to reach in just ask someone to come and latch it for you I think that'd be okay at least we're gonna try it see how it goes um, for now so so that's it that's the little bit of the in progress now what I'm gonna do is get this sub road bed piece in for coming off to here it's gonna be a bridge here and then get the other get these two pieces the arc pieces in layout piece and then the sub road bed piece over here get it all lined up make sure it all swings might they do some sanding not sure but I think it'll be okay then you know this is gonna be cut down across the level of the road and then up to match the piece this side same thing's gonna come across and then it'll be cut down well probably here go along the road back up um, it's not perfect I should have thought about this but me I'll have to do something over here 
to slope it down. Although I'm not really worried, and you know, you know what? I just want the darn gate in and working and aligned so I can run trains. Then I'll worry about prettying things up. But if people get upset about that, then you can go operate on some other layout. But I will try to work things in. And again, it's going to be seen it all the way across this uh, this mouse. No, <laughs> he's just sitting there from. Put you down there, buddy. I'm sure I'm going to be needing you in the future. See, this road's going to come across here. T intersection, it'll continue this way. And then there's going to be an underpass here that's modeled after the Route 98 underpass in Fairview, Pennsylvania. Probably a scratch built bridge, scratch built abutments. I'll put some, you know, pink foam on here for the base. And then the abutments, abutments, a bridge. It's a ballasted deck bridge, so it shouldn't be that difficult to scratch build it. But now, enough babbling, right? Let me get all this stuff done, hopefully. Then we'll come back and see how it works. So, so far, things seem to be working. So let's uh, move along some more. Let's see if I can get the sub road bed on. Everything lined up and, and still rotating. So we'll be back shortly. Alrighty, got the uh, risers in, and uh, it's okay. Um, I really struggled, to be honest, I think being here by myself, trying to get everything in and level and, and align everything, so it's not, it's certainly not perfect. It's <laughs> definitely got some Rob Bennett tolerances on it. Um, but this is in, and this one was hard to hold in. Basically, there's two risers here holding this little piece. This will be for the, the road going under the overpass. And this is the larger piece to match over here. So I did struggle a bit, and things aren't perfectly aligned. It's It looks bad there. It's good over here. It's nice and flush here. Uh, may need to shim a little bit over here. Just things moved. You know, I'm trying to hold it and keep it level and, and drive a screw. And it just, <laughs> yeah, there's some choice words uh, when I was doing this. But it's really close. I think if I if absolutely need to, I can always sand across here a little bit, or maybe even shim a little bit, because this feels slightly, just slightly higher. I don't know, not even a 32nd. Anyway, so, so far, everything does seem to swing relatively well. I probably do need to do a little bit of work on the inner arc. I did yesterday, but well, it does, see, just a little tiny tiny bit it's this inside corner that's catching just a wee bit but other than that it appears to appears to work okay now I have, I have handles to add and whatnot so I'll get to that but what, uh, what I'm gonna do since I'm gonna start traveling again and pretty much be gone for almost two weeks uh, Bill Shop, who helped me with this suggested you know what let it sit let it sit for two weeks, see what happens, see if things expand. You know, don't try, try to rush things, which is pretty sage advice. So, you know, we'll see if this needs any more sandy when I come back. I may just touch up this because I did add. I filled in the gap that was between the, this wedge piece and the fascia. I had this fascia piece. It's not the prettiest in the world. That's because I'm a terrible carpenter and things don't align right. <laughs> Although, at the time I built the layout, I wasn't really considering all this so eh, it is what it is but I think once I get things painted up and dressed up and curtains and blah 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 around the other side I think things will look just fine so that's it gonna uh, let it sit for a while still have to decide what I want to do for this bridge I know the prototype it's a balance of deck really simple looking bridge I might be able to scratch build something uh, just have to make some abutments in a simple bridge balance of deck I have photographs of the actual bridge. Looking at it, I probably could use the Walther's Urban Underpass, which is too large, but if I cut it down, um, I, I could probably kit bash that. The nice thing with that is it's already got the abutments and everything. Um, and if I shorten the bridge, it might look acceptable. I'm not sure yet. I'll contemplate that over my uh, hotel stays in the upcoming days. I also do have a little uh, contact switch. The click, which I may put, you know, in here for indication when the gates open or not properly locked or something like that. Maybe I think it'd be an easy, an easy enough thing to add in here 
and let the roller roll on the this side of the layout so overall so far I'm pretty happy again that's not hundred percent done I'm not claiming victory yet uh, because the the real test will be once I get the track all in uh, and of course I'm complicating my life a little bit by having to have the bridge obviously I can't lay the track without the bridge being there so I have to get that figured out um, if I'm gonna scratch build it I need some time to make the abutments and then make the bridge which I think I could anyway so, so far, that's it. Happy so far. We'll uh, be back in a little bit once uh, it settles and I progress a little bit further. Okay, we are back. Let's see, since the last segment, it's probably been about a week and a half. Maybe almost two weeks. And what, what I decided to do, I started rambling on about the bridge, but you know what? That's going to be a separate video, how I build the bridge. Um, I'm going to scratch build it. I've actually got it progressing fairly well. So that's going to be a whole separate video, just so it doesn't make this video extremely long and, and really great people's nerves. So what I did, have done in the interim, I was home for one weekend. I guess i got to be able to do a little bit of work. I decided to modify this piece because it originally ran all the way out. And given how the road is, it would have been really tough to make a good-looking embankment, I think. So I just pulled it off, cut it out, cut the riser, took out the one riser that was here, modified it. So you can see how that's going to give me some more room to make a nice, a much better-looking, I think, slope. Um, so I got this cut here in the back. I do have the, uh, and I cut this fascia in the front as well, down to level, as soon as I got this figured out. I have the road in. It's one millimeter gray craft foam. Um, it's been painted. I painted with this just cheapo stuff from Volamart. What is that? Country gray. Look close. What I was trying to do was match the existing road. It's not perfect, but I'll weather it and you know whatever. It'll be okay. Um, I have not yet made the cut, so I got to really remind myself: don't swing the gate. I'm going to be ripping this road apart, which is something I could see myself doing. But I want to get it in and glued and painted, let the paint sit up, and then I'm going to come in with it real, real careful with a knife to slice it. I have to. Probably going to be an ugly gap there, but I have to do something because the darn gate is designed to swing open. So, so that's where we, where we are now. Like I said, everything's staying pretty darn level. Doesn't seem to be settling a lot. That's nice and level there. Uh, I did have to to re-level this one a little bit because of the of the bridge so it's it's off slightly I might have to shim this is actually gonna be the bridge um, might have to shim a little bit on this side so the, the next steps what I'm gonna do is babble on some more get the abutments in because they can be set in work on all this getting all the scenery set with the foam part of it done obviously make that slice then I, gotta, I have to kind of wait because there's a couple of parts I need for the bridge. Um, but with the abutments being in, I can do all the scenery work. Then the plan is to probably cut the main line back on this side. You can see I have over there, um, I'm going to use four pieces of new Pico Code 83. You know, cut them back here somewhere to point the joint back there. Bring them over. Probably put a, the joint on the, on the two pieces of flex somewhere right in the middle, right of the bridge. This is all, it's a balance of deck, I'll go right across it. On this side, again, cut this side back somewhere in here. I don't want the, I don't want the joints to be real close. Cut it back here. I'm a little concerned because I brought this curve right off. It should have been straight for a longer, you know, or a tangent for a longer, but whatever. Hopefully I'll get it cut and reinstalled. And then once I get the bridge built, boom, that'll go in. Corker goes across, the track goes across, secure it in nice. And obviously come in here and make the cut on this end. And make the cut on this end. With uh, my Dremel. And then, man, hopefully everything lines up. And then get it wired up and then it's pretty much good to go. So, alright. So, more to come as we progress. Uh, the next segment might show with some of the scenery done and the abutments in. And they got to wait till I can finish the bridge, but uh, we're, we'll keep plugging away at this. Okay, it's a little in progress here. Got some of the terraforming under underway. 
The abutments are in and drying up. I put the bridge in there with some weight since it's a nice and snug fit to keep some pressure down and against the abutments to the sides and then cut some of the foam for here. Again, the road's sitting there. Got this cut back. I decided to add a wee little, just a little bit of a hill here. Kind of blend it in as it rolls on to there. So I think that'll look okay. I'm going to come back in here later and then fill this in with some uh, sculpt mold to smooth that out. Fill in here on the abutments. Fill that in. You know, it's not real critical with the foam. And I know some people, I've seen pictures of people that do great jobs lining things up perfectly. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'll, I'll fill that in later. I'm not going to spend my life doing foam carving. But that's... Uh, in there and drying up, so let that dry for a while. Then we'll uh, continue on with the probably next will be sculptal mold. Be a good a coat of paint and a real, real uh, base layer of maybe some burnt grass or something like that, just to so it's not pink. Stripe the road, get that striped, weathered. Then I'll be waiting to do the bridge. So, all right, more to come. Okay, we're having some fun now. Got the uh, scenery going on here, a little in progress. I decided to add some rocks. That looked a little boring, so I said, you know what, what the heck, let's add some rocks over there. I got this embankment done. I can see the roads down, sidewalks in, the abutments are in. I have uh, the sculptal mold in around the abutments. And uh, I decided to add a little, just a slight little hill on this side. Just to make it look like it kind of flows nicely from the end there, Fairview. On the very top there, it was two pieces of half inch that I kind of formed. I do got to be careful of this edge here where it wants to rotate. But then I just took some sculptal mold that was left over and made a nice little, it was flat. So I just kind of put a little crown on the top of it there. So I think it looks like a nice little, nice little hill there. To me, it looks like everything seems to flow pretty nicely. So... Let this set up for a while, come back in, you get a coat of paint and some initial ground foam and I do need to stripe the road and keep, you know, weather, weather that up a little bit, keep working on it, but uh, here we go, having some fun. This is, I love doing this stuff, this is the, you know, the scenery stuff to me is the most fun stuff you can do. Anyway, let's uh, keep plugging away here. Alright, here we go, I've been... Uh, you know, it's weird. I've had all this stuff done for uh, for a little while, not not a real long time, and, and I've been hesitant to put the track on. You, know, you get nervous about certain things. And I was like, well, what's the point of all this if you don't put the track on? So here we go. So I got the original cork cut back and the track cut back to where I'm going to join it. It's not ideal. I'd like to go a little bit further, but I got this darn curve. Again, I should have been more tangent coming off of here, but again, this was... Kind of what I'm stuck with, so so I'm gonna put the cork down. I got the cork cleaned up, nice and smooth on this side. I didn't bring the cork back because I'm nervous about this. <laughs> you know, of course, I had to put things in place. So I said, you know what? I'm just gonna cut the track back because I do want some more track to be down and secure before I cut it. I don't want a real tiny little piece, which is where this track originally ended. But here, I think I'll be okay. It's nice and smooth. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'll swing the gate in, I'll get the cork cut. I think I'll be okay here. You know, it's it should be glued down nice there. That's why I'm no, that's why I'm just nervous about taking this back because I, I don't feel like destroying this and I'm sure I would. So I'll sw I'll swing the gate in. Which is right now. Get the cork cut, probably get the track cut as well. I'm um, planning to bring a piece in and then put a joint here in the center like right in the bridge. And then another piece from, you know, from this track over to here. That gives you a nice long piece up to the cut. And a relatively, <laughs> again, i got to be careful on this side. Not as long as I'd like it to be up, up to the cut. So get everything done. Then get the cork in, uh, down and glued in with the gate closed. Let it set up. Maybe all overnight, several hours. I'm not sure. I'm, I don't want to rush things. Then do the cuts for the cork here here swing make things all you know make sure things swing okay and touch it up as needed then lay the track in here 
into their joint, up to their joint, get that you know secured in, let that set up, make sure it's real nice and dry, and then come back and do the cut here, which I'm not too worried about. That should be okay. That's just the the straight cut. Now this one here where it's curved, <laughs> I guess I'll be okay. But I'll just go in there, real, you know, work carefully with a Dremel. Do 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 do, make four cuts and then cross my fingers and hope it all swings okay so all right so that's where we are let's get the uh, cork and track ready to go in okay we're ready to go so what I did I got the cork in here I have the track pieces cut they are over there so then what I did was I laid the cork in I then leveled the bridge a little bit I have um, I added an 010 piece of styrene underneath the two millimeter foam. That got it nice and level across there. Actually, that's probably close enough, but anyway. Over here, things were pretty darn good, but I did come in. This one was a little bit off, so I have an 020 and then an 010 shim here, and that makes that nice and flush. And this one is pretty flush the way it is. At least close enough. I mean, anything I put in there, I think we'll throw it off. And then on this side over here, I have a one millimeter piece of foam, an 020, and an 010. <laughs> and that kind of got it nice and level coming up onto here. So I think it's pretty much good to go. So I marked that. I'll probably come in and just put these in real quick. And then uh, hopefully things will line up. It looks okay. I'm not sure how this is going to show up on camera. But, uh, you know, trying to line it up, it's gonna, it looks pretty good. I got it measured at two inch track centers, and I, I did, I centered the bridge. I have that marked where it's gonna go in. I wasn't planning to glue that in, I was gonna let it sit there. Um, well, maybe I'll put a dab in there just to, I don't, I don't really think I have to. Because again, if this thing blows out of here because of wind, I've got much bigger issues than, than a loose bridge. So, all right, let's, uh, whoo. So we'll get the cork in, get it glued up and drying down, let it sit for a while. Um, the next day, then come back and make the cuts here and here, swing and adjust, and then lay the track pieces in. Now, I don't think I'm going to solder them here. That's why I set it up, again, because it's not... I really wish I could be redoing this whole curve, but I'm not going to, anyway. So I'm going to start here, bring it to the roughly the center point of the bridge. I may not solder that. I may just leave that open, just in case there's a little bit of expansion, contraction, movement. And then what I'll do is I'll drop a, a feeder here and a feeder here to be on both sides of that solder joint. And then th this whole lift out is powered from these blocks over here. Uh, this is actually one power district. comes along and ends right here. And then the next power district starts over there, going that way. Okay. Let's get this uh, down secured and keep forging ahead here. Okay, ready to get the track down. So what I did, I have the pieces cut. Uh, the cork obviously is down. That dried up overnight. And I went in and made, made the cuts. Got the track in. What I'm trying to do, I think I came back and I marked... You know which tie had to be removed because something's got to come out so I try to minimize that to one tie and you may be able to see I don't know I drilled pilot holes for a number 18 Brad um, the pilot holes are drilled through the ties I want to do that now I didn't drill I'm gonna drill another little pilot hole through the clearance hole once everything's in and secure then probably drive a little Brad in there just to keep it nice and secure on both sides of the gap. At least I hope that works. So I've done that on this side and I did it as well on this side. Now I can just go back and do more if I need to. Um, I'm not super happy with the alignment coming here but again that's because it's coming off a curve. I mean eh, it's okay. So everything's pretty much down. Like I say I'm gonna do some more fiddling with the actual alignment, once I actually get the track down, the track's just sitting there now. I'm going to have to take it back out and mess with it, so I'm not worried about aligning it perfectly now. But, we're going to get the, uh, I'm going to try silicone caulk. 
get it in there, weight it down, hope for the best. So, all right, more to come shortly. Oh boy, here we go. All right, so the track's in. Hopefully things lined up nice. I try to straighten the tangents as nice as possible. Now it's a matter of letting this dry up. Several hours. Depends how nervous I am about it. <laughs> and amazingly, I didn't, I didn't damage this at all. I'm proud of myself. All right, so that should set up fine. Like I said, I'll come back and probably pop in those uh, 18 brads, get them in there, drill the other holes, hopefully everything lines up, then do the cuts with the Dremel of the rail, and that's the real proof. All of this could be for naught if things for some reason shift or don't line up, but yeah, I did what I could. All right, going to let this set up, and we'll come back when things are dried up, cut, and hopefully swinging and running properly. Oh my goodness, what, what, what is this? What is going, hey, what, what, there's a, there's a train coming. Oh man, this can't be good. Or can it? I don't know, what's going to happen here? What's going on? What do you know about that? So, obviously. It's all in. It's cut. Uh, it's been powered up. You can see I started to do a little bit of the painting. I kind of covered up where the feeders are. You can see where they're marked. So, like I said, this is fed from this block, these two blocks here. I have a feeder here, feeder here. I made the cuts. Uh, they're okay. It's kind of like... Uh, Going over a turntable, I guess. Um, I did file the inside a little bit. I'm hoping in the long run <laughs> it's okay. Um, I did have to trim back. Let's see, which one was it? This one? I think this one and this one, because of like this rail and this rail, when it swings, um, again, because it's on an arc, um, you know, it, I just had to do a little bit of trimming. So this is the worst gap right here. Uh, they do clunk over. Oh, you can't even see that. What do you? Okay, so this is the worst one right here. Um, they do clunk over it a little bit, but nothing too excessive. And I've run this set of power, you know, back and forth to make sure everything's doing okay. Uh, for the wires, I'm make sure my throttle's off because <laughs> now it'll be an issue if he starts to run. I think I said it'll swing out of the way. I need to oil the hinges a little bit. I don't know. Uh, for now, I ran the wires through here. This is just stranded wire. Uh, that's the ground. That's the two buses, or the two blocks. Not the greatest. I may want to play with it a little bit more, uh, just so they kind of slide out of the way. The ground wire kind of drops down out of the way, no problem. The other ones you just got to be a little careful with. But overall... Do that. Get that secured. These things seem to. The track is dirty as crap. I this way. I really got to work on that. But it's not too bad. Like I said, this track's pretty good. I think the other one, just because of the way I had to cut it for the, again, because it's got that arc on it. It's not terrible. Um, it does clank a little bit over it, but it's not, it's nothing objectionable. So, you know what, I'm going to call this complete. I'm going to go ahead and get it up and posted. Um, obviously, I have to paint the track and ballast it and work on the scenery, but the bulk of the work is done. Uh, pretty much from now on, I've got to paint this too, of course, but 
Now it's just a matter of hoping the things stay lined up. Maybe play a little bit with the, with the wiring just to make sure it operates smoothly. Uh, more so when, when people are you know, coming and going during an op session. But overall, seems to work okay. Swings nice and like I said, just for posterity, we'll go ahead and so if you're going to leave the layout, out, you're going to do the clamp. You're going to swing this bad boy out of the way. See right now, see how it's, there's plenty of slack in it, but it just gets tight a little bit, so I want to see. Now if I swing it all the way out of the way, then it's going to be like that. Then you come out to the lounge and get your refreshing beverage. Then when you come back in, I, did, I still have handles to add to it as well. For now, since I've been playing with it, I've just been kind of monkeying around. So I see how that wire is there. And the ground wire curls up nice. I so I don't want to get pinched in here or anything, but so may need to work on something for that. But to my relief, everything seems to be okay. And the yeah, these rail joints look fine. They're not bad at all. So swing gate. Now, I realize this is a very long, very involved. Yeah. Engineers like man, that's too long a video But that's what I went through. So uh, if you actually made it through this whole thing. Thanks for watching um, And this is my rendition of a swing gate for Excess in and out. Uh, it's only taken me about three years to get here uh, I do want to thank uh, Bill Schalf. He was very very helpful instrumental as a matter of fact in helping me make this and uh, his uh, insight and his uh, carpenter skills were very, very important. Uh, I'd also like to thank Steve Hubbard. He gave me some ideas. With, he showed me a lot of pictures on his swing gate, uh, which he has on his layout, which is very nice. Uh, slightly different concept, but his help was uh, also pretty, pretty critical in getting me down the path of where I want to be. So those two gentlemen, I certainly want to thank. And again, if you actually watch this whole thing, <laughs> more power to you. Hopefully it was worth something. If anyone's got a swing gate they're working on, hey, this is my uh, my concept. Full width, fully scenic, uh, and so far everything's lining up. But again, the, I'm not going to claim I've won the war. I won the battle, uh, but winning the war is going to take you know two, three, four years. When we see over time how things are, how things at the far end here stay aligned or don't. But uh, that's it. Okay, swing gate finally done. Again, if you did watch the whole thing, thank you. So, let's go back to work on the layout. Now I can run trains and maybe even get ready to have an op session. Woohoo!